Hi team, welcome to the Kindness, Curiosity and Comfortable Shoes podcast. My name is James McFetridge and this is an ongoing toolkit for all healthcare staff. Whether you are a porter or a paediatrician, a domestic or a driver, clinical or non-clinical, just starting or just finishing your work in healthcare, this podcast aims to give you some useful thoughts about working for this amazing business to get you through your day. As Noddy Holder once famously said, it's Christmas! Yes, Christmas, that time of year when everyone is happy and jolly and yet if you work in healthcare, the chances are you're just going to be working out how many shifts you have to work when everyone else is not working or enjoying themselves. Even though we know, especially so in healthcare, we know that there are a lot of people who don't have good Christmases, that it can be quite a miserable or upsetting day for health-related reasons or social related reasons but there's that thing isn't there we all get very excited about who's going to be doing which shift at Christmas and is it fairly worked out there always seems to be someone who's drawn the short straw isn't there there's someone who every year saying well I work this many Christmases and Boxing Days and New Year's previously and I've got the same this year I'm fairly sure that for most places over time, it evens out. Maybe it's just the people with the loudest voices who uh, seem to complain most. But uh, I think certainly over my uh, 25 years when I was working clinically, there was uh, an appropriate proportion of time, uh, depending on which rotor I was on and how many people uh, we had to uh, populate that rotor. I had a fair proportion, a reasonable proportion of shifts that were the bad or difficult shifts. My main gripe was my very first Christmas shift, and this was only back in 97, uh, for the 24 hours that I was in the hospital, I got paid 50% half time because that was the way the rotor and the contract worked that time. Anything outside of your core 40-hour working week was paid at 50% of the time. Uh, So no bonuses, uh, got paid less, uh, significantly less than everyone else in the hospital. Thankfully, times have changed since then. But we still have that issue about working at Christmas and from a patient perspective, uh, there are strange things that happen, people coming in and uh, even from a, an acute perspective wanting, to, you know, can I get this uh, better for, for the Christmas? Uh, certainly up in the northeast of England seems to be referred as that, the Christmas. Will I be better for the Christmas? Uh, and like everything in healthcare, it's sometimes uh, pretty difficult to predict exactly what's going to happen. Certainly whether you're going to be well or not on a particular day is next to impossible really and uh, I think because of that slight strangeness of Christmas and the holiday period and uh, often (laughs) that period of time between Christmas and New Year uh, referred to as the Merineum I won't go into details but the uh, the effect of normal presentations of patients is just accentuated at Christmas time and when uh, well one thing that certainly strikes me was uh, uh, when I'm thinking back about time I spent in the hospital over that period of time on a New Year's Eve shift uh, three hours after we'd seen in the new year uh, usually by someone shouting over the tannoy or something like that Um, but at three o'clock in the morning I picked up the next patient to see Uh, to be seen in the emergency department and it was a gentleman with chest pain I thought that's fair enough and as I took the story from him it turned out he'd had that chest pain for uh, two maybe three weeks and he thought it'd be a good time to get it seen to and I think that shows that kind of underlying weirdness that you know we get used to that in emergency medicine people attending at what we would feel is inappropriate times with inappropriate problems but 
I never really got to the bottom of it with this guy, but I've always been left thinking, you know, was he really there for chest pain or was he lonely because he didn't have anyone else to be with at that uh, time? And Christmas always feels different, but it shouldn't do really. Again, perhaps it's the strange things that we do that, uh, again, thinking back to that very first Christmas uh, that I worked and absolutely cringing at doing a ward round with a consultant who was offering a, a present from uh, Santa's sack to uh, to this patient who was elderly with delirium, pretty confused anyway, and, and thinking of uh, that patient in their delirious state being offered a present by someone he didn't know who didn't even look like Father Christmas or maybe if he did that would be even more confusing it's just all a bit strange and there's that weirdness of trying to keep up the jolly festive atmosphere but clearly for the majority of people in a healthcare setting it's miserable they are ill unwell they may have just been given some pretty devastating news about their health or the health of uh, their loved ones. And so that juxtaposition of trying to wear the the nice festive Christmas jumper uh, uh, just isn't appropriate in those settings. Uh, and yet we, we feel like we need to celebrate it, mark it in uh, some way, which uh, I just don't feel personally that it, it, it sits right with me uh, to try and jollify up something uh, that in all other aspects is just it's another working day and it's appropriate to have that seriousness and respect of the people who are seeking medical attention uh, uh, on days that just happen to be part of the uh, festive period. Well, this is just a short episode, just to have a little think about how the uh, this season uh, may affect you in your working life. And I hope whatever you're doing, that uh, it is okay for you and uh, whatever you would like out of the next uh, week or so is uh, what you want and uh, that work is appropriate and good to you. I'm going to leave you with a link that just really makes me laugh it does uh, contain some very offensive language so please don't listen to it if you are going to be uh, offended by this but it's just a reminder that even though uh, Christmas uh, should be a, a jolly time there are lots of people who are affected by it and uh, sometimes that can include ourselves when we are under pressure uh, working in health and uh, Again, keeping in line with the themes of the podcast, please remember to be uh, kind to people and remember there may be people who Christmas means absolutely nothing because they don't uh, celebrate it at all. So please be kind to people, uh, be curious about what people are doing and their particular circumstances and obviously look after yourself. The link is to a song by a group called Fascinating Aida. If you search up Fascinating Aida's Christmas song, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. And as I say, uh, uh, yet another warning, it does contain some offensive uh, language. But I hope if you are okay to listen to it, that you enjoy it. Thank you for listening today. Let me know what you thought about this episode. I am on at JMAC Education on all the socials. And there are links in the show notes for anything that we've talked about today that may be of interest or further reading for you. I'd be really grateful if you could rate, review and subscribe. And most importantly, if you found this helpful, please tell your colleagues about this podcast. So please take care of yourselves out there. You are doing a great job. And remember, be kind, be curious and don't forget your comfortable shoes. Thank you to Shakina Studio for the music downloaded through Audio Jungle. Thank you to Beth for the artwork and the photo produced through Canva. And thank you to Buzzsprout for hosting the podcast. The Kindness, Curiosity and Comfortable Shoes podcast is a JMAC Education production.